High school angel, right? So he had invited us, or invited me. And um, I first came to a, a men's fellowship. That's when I first came. And then I went home. I told my wife, "Man, I go. I, I kind of like it there." And she was all like, oh, "Okay, yeah, whatever, right?" So then I came to a Wednesday service, I believe. And then finally. She came with me on a Sunday, right? So we both came on a Sunday. And what's crazy about that is that Sunday we came was Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> and I just wanted to share that because when Pastor asked us to do the announcement, I didn't even think nothing about it, right? Until the memory on the Facebook came up and they showed that first time I was at the men's fellowship. So then I started calculating the days and I was like, wait, wait a minute. That's the first Sunday that we came together and it was Super Bowl Sunday. And that was three years ago to the day that we first came in to the church. So it gives a whole new meaning to Super Sunday. out to you guys and to make a connection and I just encourage you guys to get to get rooted to get planted somewhere if not this church a church but this church will be awesome as well so I just wanted to share that with you real quick before we get into our announcements and, oh, wait, I forgot one more thing I got another praise report I forgot sorry Pastor. um this week for our family was a big blessing and um, not just my family but my brother Kevin and his family as many people know that his wife has been battling cancer for the past several months right and every week that she would go to her chemo treatments I would always see he would always post one step closer to restoration Every week, in the following week, one step closer to restoration, right? So this week, they took their final step of restoration. And she rang that bell of hope this week, and she is now 100% free cancer.
um, and I believe, well, today is going to be the last day, and we have our orientation tomorrow at 7. So I invite all of you ladies to come out. Our fellowship would be February 19th. So if you can't um, sign up for the ministry this year, pray on it. We will see you next year. But if not, we will see you February 19th for an amazing, amazing night of fellowship. Praise God. Now we can stand on our feet so we can do our Bible plays. Anybody need a Bible? Can you please raise your hand? We can get a Bible to you as we do our pledge. Okay, everybody ready? At the count of three, we're going to say the pledge. Ready? One, two, three. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. I will hide his words in my heart and I might sin against God. And if you believe that, give it a round of praise right now. As we welcome our senior pastor and author, Pastor Jimmy Holmes. Now let's give it a Come on, let's give it up for Jesus here today. Amen. Praise God. You may have a seat. What a blessing, man. Good job, guys. Let's give it up for Paul and his amazing wife, man.
And just in case you want to send them, if you don't want to send them, it's okay. Keep them here. But today's Super Bowl Sunday. I'm excited because, um, and I didn't know about Paul uh, and, um, that, and Irene that they, this is the first time they came three years ago to the Super Bowl. And now they're, now they're doing announcements. Today was their first time doing announcements. And it's pretty cool to see how God works and how God uses people when you say connect to Amen. Praise God for that. So I'm going to try to make sense out of the whole thing. So let us just close our eyes and let us pray first of all. Father God, we come to you this morning, Lord, and we thank you for the words about to come forth. I ask you that you anoint my lips and let it be you speaking through me. And I ask you, Father, that you open up the ears of every person that is in this place. I ask you these things in Jesus' name and everyone say, Amen and Amen. Please join me in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5 is in the New Testament. Way in the back, way in the back. Romans chapter 5. Amen. We're going to read a scripture and then we're going to go right into breaking bread during the Lord's Supper and then we're going to get into the message. Amen. So uh, it, uh, I'm really excited about this. If I can have those that are going to do the Lord's Supper, just I know you just come forward already and just get ready for that. Those of you that are going to be helping out with the Lord's Supper, you know who you are. Uh, the rest of you, if you can please stand and we're going to read the Bible in the book of Romans chapter 5 and then we're going to... Uh, ask you to sit down and we're going to pray and we're going to do the Lord's Supper, right? we got plenty of people to help out, so we're going to be pretty cool. You ready? Alright, here we go. The Word of God reads in the book of Romans chapter 5. It's way in the back, guys. It's after the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And keep on going. You're going to see the book of Acts and then Romans. Everyone there say amen? The Word of God reads, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Somebody say peace. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access. Somebody say access. By faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope. Somebody say hope. Amen. Hope, hope of glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character, hope.
Jesus once again this morning. Amen. So what the other team was going to do 
And the devil doesn't want you to get to the end zone. He doesn't want you to finish. He doesn't want you to finish this month. He wants to destroy you. And God, for whatever reason, God has sustained you, man. Like in the beginning of the year, some people lost some people or they went through some things or, or just like Cynthia, they experienced cancer. Can you imagine the enemy trying to hit her really hard when she did hit her with cancer, hit her with diabetes or hit someone with, with, with a loss or something? And it, and it can make you fumble the ball and cause you to just sit there in the sidelines and say, man, there's no more. I'm not going to continue. But thank God for people like, like Cynthia that have perseverance and has a husband on the sidelines cheering her on. Any wannabe players? Players. 
Jonah does what Marshall does, Jim Marshall and, and Roy Regals he does, and he gets the ball and he goes the opposite way, wrong way. He goes the opposite way, and if you know the story, he ends up in the belly of a fish. Now, some of the, some of you know what I'm talking about. And after some prayer and after some dark times, the fish spits him out, and then he comes and he goes to where he's supposed to go. Now he's, there's a turning point. Now he's coming back. Now he's now he comes to a realization and say, you know what? I need to go do what, what God did to me because while he was going the wrong way, all hell was breaking loose because a storm came against him and all kinds of stuff was happening. You gotta read the story. See, when you go the wrong way, eventually God will get your attention one way or another. He'll cause something to happen in your life to tell you, listen, I love you so much and I, I know you're going through all that hell, but I need you to go back to where I called you. And that's what happens in life to all of us. When we go through some hell or something happens in our life, it's, we can't blame the devil. It's us. We're going the wrong way. And because we're going the wrong way, God said, all right, man, if something happens that it, that it might hurt us, but God said, I love you so much. You're going the wrong way. You're going to go to hell. I want you to go from left to right. I want to make you that righteous man. I want you to get to the end zone. I want you to finish what I started in your life. But you keep on going the wrong way. And this is one of the things that God is telling Jonah. You need to go there. And then here Jonah, he he he, he goes, comes, comes to a, a point where he said, man, I got to go back. And then he's going to Tarsus. He's going to this place, to Nineveh, where, where God called him to go to the beginning. And he tells him to repent when he just repented himself. I mean, he just repented himself. He's telling them, you need to repent. Jonah ran the wrong way. Everybody still with me? Okay. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, are you still with me? All right. Another man but, but, uh, earned this name as well. Uh, the wrong way. Uh, doesn't really have a, a name, but let's call him the prodigal son. And the prodigal son, you can look that up when you get a chance. You can write it down. It's in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 15. You will find I want to break bread with you, my daughter. 
If you, take, if you really sit back and think, God woke you up this morning. He brought you here this morning, and he gave you bread, the bread of life. He said, listen, I want you to, I want to cleanse you. Yeah, that's, that's good. I'm not talking about where you going to after the Super Bowl after this. I'm talking about Jesus. When you leave here, you can tell your friend, man, I had lunch with Jesus, man. I broke bread with my father. My God broke bread with me. See, when we take that seriously and say, yeah, this is not just the Jews. It's not just a wafer. No, this is a body of Christ, man. This is the blood of Jesus. If you take that blood of Jesus, that little Jews, and not just go like that and then go, no. If you take it and say, you know what? I've been dealing with some sickness. I've been dealing with the marriage thing. I've been dealing with some pain, some hurt. And you take it by faith and you know that God is God. And you take it and say, you know what? There is power in the blood of Jesus. Or sadness, they, they God brings you. 
he puts that. But God, God sees value in each and every one of us. God loves each and every one of us just the same he loves the person on the street. He loves the drug addict. He loves the abuser. He loves the murderer. He loves every single one of us. What he doesn't like is the sin. And here God brings all us sinners into this house. Because we're all sinners. He brings us to this house. That's what I was talking about. We don't deserve the Super Bowl ring. But God brings us to this place and he says, quick. Jesus. 
you don't listen. Pay attention. Sensuality comes in. Sen- 
rhinoceros skin where nothing bothers you, just full. Then you start saying, you know what? You're right. I'm going to humble myself. If my people will humble themselves, the Bible says, I will hear their prayers. I will come to the rescue. Hallelujah. And I will turn their life around. I will do some amazing things. Because God says, I want to I, I, I wanna come and I want to come and bless you in abundantly. See, God is so good. But after the sensuality takes place and then spiritual destruction takes place and then there's self-abasement. There's a sixth step of going down. Self-abasement means humiliation of oneself. That means you're embarrassed. I don't want to go back to church. But people, everybody knows me. What are they going to say? Who cares what they're going to say? You're not here to satisfy anybody but Jesus. Hallelujah. You're here for God. And after self-abasement, it's starvation. And here's when you get your, your, your ring, your Super Bowl ring. I'm almost done. First thing you gotta do is come to your senses. That's the first thing the prodigal son did. He came to his senses. That one, that's one step that you even even came into this house. And then after he came to the sense, to realization, his senses, there was a resolution. And then after the resolution, there was repentance. You can't just come, come to your senses, and then leave the same. You gotta repent and say, God, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. I'm not here for anyone. It's you, dear Lord. You've been so good to me. Because if I'm still alive right now in 2021. Turn back around. God says, I 
thank you, Father, because there might be someone here in this house that say, Pastor, I need to return. I've come to a realization. I've come to my senses, but I've been doing things my own way. And I hear the word, but I leave here doing the same old thing over and over and over. And by the grace of God, I'm still here. But I can't be playing with, with God anymore. I can't be playing games. This is not like the Super Bowl that we can get in the field and play. This is not a game. This is life. This is a matter of life or death. And today I want to make a choice that I'm returning back. I've been going the wrong way for too long. And if that's you, I want you to say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for going the wrong way. Because I know that you died on that cross. And you died so I can go the right way. So today, Lord, I'm asking you, you be my coach. You be my father. Come into my life, Lord. I accept you. I'm coming out of that tunnel. I'm coming out of that darkness. Come on, keep on talking. I'm coming out of that darkness, and I'm coming to the light. I want to feel your presence. Embrace me, Lord. Reclose me, Lord. Put on the right shoes, Father. I'll take off my dirty sandals, Lord. Lord, I want my name written on the book of life. I want to go to heaven, Father. I want to go tell others how great you are, Lord. Because I came in here one way, but I know that I'm leaving another way. And Jesus, I want my healing. I want my transformation. I want everything that you have in store for me. I want to experience it. I don't want to just see it. I want to experience it. That one day I can stand in front of people. Come on, keep on talking. That one day I can stand in front of people and testify and be that witness like your other sons and daughters and tell others what you have done in my life. So today, Lord, I surrender it all. I give it all to you. And I pray that you give me strength because I can't make it to the end zone without you by my side. And I ask you all these things in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen.